Rob Cole in class that we uh, studied this notion of a dynamical system where we're given a, a vector specifying the state of the system and also uh, a matrix which determines how the system changes from time step to time step. So here we've got a, a predator prey system detailed in the notes and dealing with owls and rats and so the owls feed on the rats and the rats are depleted by the owls but otherwise replenish the reproduction rate. So our time here is measured in months, k okay, is the time parameter, and the matrix which controls the dynamical system is detailed in your notes, the particular reasons, but I'll just write out matrix A is given by this here, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.104, and 1.1. And each, the vector at time k plus 1 is given by multiplying the vector at time k on the left by a. So we want to say, what's the long-term behavior of this system? So what we can do, <coughs> as in lectures, we want to find the uh, eigenvectors, the eigenvalues of A, and see whether they're greater than or equal to 1 or smaller than 1 in magnitude. And then we can uh, see what happens to the eigenvectors as, as time progresses. So the eigenvalues of A, eigenvalues of A are lambda 1, which is 1.02 and lambda 2, which is 0.58. So here we have one eigenvalue which is larger than 1 in magnitude and one which is smaller than 1 in magnitude. So if we decompose, uh, since we have two different eigenvalues, we have two linearly independent eigenvectors, we're in R2, and so the eigenvectors will form a basis for R2. So we can write any x naught, so let's say x naught is our initial population. So x naught equals initial population. And then we want to write <coughs> we want to write this in terms of the basis, which is the eigenvectors of, of A. So so let <coughs> let's let V1 and V2, V1 and V2 be two linearly independent eigenvectors of A. And so they form a basis, a basis for R2, and we have that V1 has eigenvalue lambda 1 and V2 has eigenvalue lambda 2. Uh, so we can write x0 as C1 V1 plus C2 V2 for some real numbers C1 and C2. Then x1, which is the uh, the components of which give the population at time k equals 1 is given by a times x0, which we write out x0 in terms of the two eigenvectors. And remembering their eigenvectors, this is c1 lambda 1 v1 plus c2 lambda 2 v2. And we continue again in this way. So you look at x2, which is a times x1, and then we get c1 lambda 1 squared v1 plus c2 lambda 2 squared v2. And the general term, take xk, which is uh, a to the k x0, I'll continue running up there, up here we have uh, xk, is going to be c1 lambda 1 to the power k v1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the k v2. But as k gets larger, heads off to infinity, then lambda 2 in magnitude being less than 1, lambda 2 to the k in magnitude goes towards 0. And we have Lambda 1 is bigger than 1 in magnitude, so uh, 
<clears throat> lambda 1 to the k increases. as k increases. And so when k is large, this second term here is very small. And so xk is approximately c1 lambda 1 k v1. Uh, we have um, xk is approximately equal to um, C1, now remember lambda 1 was 1.02. So C1 times 1.02 to the k times the initial, um, the initial vector x0, which, um, <clears throat> so we have now xk in terms of x0 plus some uh, initial factor C1, which is, which is not terribly important to consider the, the long-term behavior, it just reflects our uh, initial population. But if we have, uh, if we have, as it states in the, in the example sheet, the owl population is just given by the number of owls, but the numbers of rats is measured in thousands. So we have, you know, so many more rats, so we just scale it appropriately. And so we can take, for instance, we have an initial population of so x0 being 10 owls per 13,000 rats, then we can see that the, um, the populations of both grow over time. So we have a slow growth of about 2% per month of both owls and rats. And if we started with uh, these particular proportions, then they continue in that proportion stably. And so this is the long-term behavior of this system.